I'm going to review the 2023 film Poor Things. And yes, this is a little different. I'm on my phone. I don't know what's going on with my camera. I feel like it's gaslighting me. It's making me feel like I look crazy. Maybe I still look crazy. I don't know. I looked at myself and my phone and I'm like, I look fine. But then my camera, I look crazy. So I, I don't know what's going on. I mean, the setup is still good, but I don't really have the out of focus background, but background is cool. So yeah, I just wanted to do a quick review of this movie. Um, I watched it over the weekend and I know it won some awards at the Oscars, this past Oscars. So yeah, so around here I like to start off with my cons, then my pros, and then go into my overall thoughts, especially for this movie, which is a very controversial uh, film. So. So the synopsis is, brought back to life by an unorthodox scientist, a young woman runs off with a lawyer on a whirlwind adventure across the continent. Free from the prejudices of her times, she grows steadfast in her purpose to stand for equality and liberation. To start off with my cons, I didn't have a lot of cons. Um, I think what, one of my cons was that some of the score hurt my ears like so I, I didn't like some of the score it's, it's a pro and a con because the score really fit the film it's a very it has a lot of disturbing moments it's a very random film it's a very quirky film and so the score is very quirky but sometimes it's just very jarring to the point that it, it was literally hurting my ears I had to turn it down so another con that I had was Bella's progress throughout the film I felt like it was a little too quick for me, a little too unrealistic. Um, I did read that her brain compared to others was very advanced, like it was advancing. I think they, they may have uh, mentioned that in the beginning. Um, and, uh, da, 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 da. I, I, and I'm not sure because they, they didn't explain where they were in her journey like you know when she left with mark ruffalo's character i wasn't sure if it had been some years some months maybe that could have explained some things but i just felt like and i understood that once she started reading and once she started to explore life she progressed um in life but it just felt like it was a little too quick for me um and then I really, and I hate to say this, I really felt like all the acting was good until it got to Gerard Carmichael's part. And I really liked, I, he was a good guy, and I liked his character, but I felt like the acting was a little flat. I just, it just felt very one note to me, and it kind of, it took me out of the film. Something about, it was just too, like, monotone. I feel like that's how he speaks normally, but, um... And I also felt in general, the film was just too long. I felt like it could have been shortened. My pros were the obvious, just the cinematography, the fish eye lens. I don't know if it's still called that, but the fish eye lens, that look. Um, at first it started off in black and white and then it went into color. And so the black and white parts, I, I kind of was like, oh, this seems like it would be a very colorful film. I feel like their outfits would be colorful. I want to see color, but then that came like, I, I think before the halfway mark in the film. So the colors were great. The, I thought Emma Emma Stone did great. I thought Mark Ruffalo did great. Um, I like the set design, even though it was confusing. I mean, like one minute I'm like, looks like they're in a small town in Paris. And the next time, the next moment it looks like they're in Wonderland. I felt like a lot of gems were dropped in this, even though they were they were sort of basic, but um, some of the things that I picked up on were the madam. There was a time, there was a scene where she said, um, to grow in life, you have to go through the good and the bad. You can't just go through the good. You're not gonna avoid the bad. And these are things that help you grow. And I feel like that is very, very, very true. Um, not saying that you should have to go through traumatic events to grow, but you need all of it to, you know, become somewhat of a whole person and to, you know, deal with life. You know, if you're constantly under a rock or you're being coddled, then um, you're not really prepared for life. And unfortunately, some of the people who have gone through the most are uh, 
little more prepared for life. Sometimes, not all the time, because it also breaks some of those people down um, to where they, you know, don't have the best life. The other gym, or the other thing I picked up on is when, so this is a spoiler, when, when her technical husband at the end wanted her to drink the gin and the chloroform. She said, cause she understood what was going on, but she said it would be a relief to her to drink it. It could rid her of her questing self. And then he says, ironically, sip and that freedom is yours. And that was just a contradiction because if she drinks that, she's basically just stuck in this big old house with him and she's not free at all. But it did make me think about I guess, in a way, it made me think of people who are kind of like blissfully ignorant to things in life. And some people choose and some people don't choose, but sometimes I think people choose because they don't want to deal with the darkness of the world. I think sometimes when you have the resources and you read more, you explore more, you start to see the world is a, a very, it, it, there are a lot of good things in the world, a lot of positive, but it open, it also opens your eyes to a lot of the negative things. And so it reminded me of this, of that scene, because basically if she is trapped with him, then she's not exploring and she's not seeing the good and the bad. Um, and it's not opening her eyes. And, um, but I mean, at the end of the day, exploring and actually being free is better than being trapped and um, complacent, you know, and, and under this man's, you know, control. And just in general, the men were trash. And so that's, that's the final thing I wanted to talk about is, you know, I know there's a lot of controversy over this film and I understand why there's controversy. Um, someone I know went to see it and they told me the premise and I remember watching this video essay about sex scenes and how Hollywood is dealing with them and how mainstream Hollywood is like moving away because of like purity and all that stuff um, and independent films are not and it included this film but that's before I really knew what it was about I didn't really think anything of it but when I heard what it was about I was like that that sounds weird those two things sex and her having the brain that she had but and then the conversation of Hollywood being weird and stuff came up. But I guess for me, I look a little, I look at this stuff a little different because even before I watched the film, I just thought to myself, I was like, more than likely the point is not that this is okay, that these men are taking advantage of her, or this one man is taking advantage of her. Um, I think the point more than likely is going to be that he's not a good person for, um, um, going after her and that and, and that's what ended up happening in the film like Mark Ruffalo yeah he's having sex with her but he's also a piece of shit <laughs> like <laughs> he's not a good character and even before watching I was like I was assuming that she more than likely is going to explore and see that this is wrong you know her the person who did the procedure on her is, is, is wrong and for the most part she's going to leave you know, um, escape out of the situation. That is kind of what happened, but not really as far as the person who created her, but Mark Ruffalo's character and some of the other characters she did uh, get away from. And so I think sometimes we jump to conclusion a little too much with, with movies like this that are uncomfortable. We just kind of take it as face value. Um, and say this is disturbing, this is disgusting, because I've seen a lot of comments about it. And I understand people still seeing it as disgusting, um, but for me, I just saw it as the point is that what these men are doing to her are not right. And, and she sees through it once she grows as a person. Even, even I, and I don't know what age her brain was at certain times, but I think the point was that this is wrong and once she challenges it it becomes an issue for a lot of these men but yeah that being said yeah i um first of all i like controversial things like when people are upset about stuff i like to see what's going on so um and then i just it to me it looked like a 
I just, the visuals look good to me. Um, and so it just looked a little different. And so like I was saying, I think, you know, the, the issue is, is that people um, hear the premise and they get weirded out and they don't give it a chance, which is whatever, that everybody has their choice. If, if you don't want to watch a film, you don't want to watch a film. But um, if you watch it through, then you start to see that the message isn't that it's okay um, to, to engage in, in sex with women like this. Um, it's more about her growing. And I know that's another thing that some people had an issue with um, as far as her journey through life. I guess people feel like it's a cop out when the journey feels like it's for women the journey always has to be sexual but i'm like it's like 50 million films out here and they're not all about sex so i mean you know and, and there were other things that she discovered another thing that's controversial that's very controversial but with her discovering that part of herself again i don't know what age she was but she definitely seemed young it made me think about that taboo topic of that in young young people I'm trying to be careful with what I say, but that's just a real thing, you know, and of course it's exploited, but on the other end, it's not always exploited, it's, it's, it's a part of life, and it made me think about that part of life in, in young people and how, especially when it's women and girls, we try to ignore it and we try to sweep it under the rug, and I feel like it's real, and if it's you know, if it's taught or, or introduced in an appropriate way, I don't feel like there's anything wrong with it. But it did make me think about that as well. Um, and so, yeah, I also thought the film was funny. I thought, um, even though Mark Ruffalo's character to me was so creepy and disgusting, he was, like, really funny, especially when he was breaking down. And, um, and then, like, yeah, like, uh, um, just the men kind of using her but I, I, I related it to, to real life because I felt like some of the men were attracted to the youthfulness of her, but they didn't want everything that came with that type of personality or those actions. Like, you're okay when it feels like she's childlike, but you're not okay when she's super blunt at dinner or saying that she's going to punch a baby or whatever. And then more so once she started to become more intelligent that was almost that was like a threat to a lot of these men and I feel like in real life with anybody but especially with women a lot of times that's a threat you know it's like you're you might be attracted to me and and everything's good when I agree with you and I sit there and I be quiet but as soon as I challenge you or I might be a little bit smarter than you or I pick up on your toxic ways then all of a sudden I'm an issue and I felt like her her character and her development really represented that just in general so yeah so I like the film I'm not gonna lie the scenes you know the sex scenes to me just weren't hidden like that it is not the type of stuff that i'm used to seeing at least it was a little dry to me so i don't know what people what all the hubba baloo was about but um they could i i've seen i've seen better i've seen better but um but yeah so um the rating i would give this film i would give it an eight and a half out of ten yes i give it eight and a half out of ten so if you like my review, like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what you thought of the film below. If you watched it, if you haven't, maybe why you haven't. Uh, if you watched the Oscars, I did. This was one of my first times not watching the Oscars. Um, I don't have cable. I don't have cable. So I didn't watch it. But um, shout out to all the black people who won. But yes, thanks for watching. And be on the lookout for my next review or reaction or whatever. Thanks for watching. Thank you.